But let's go ahead and talk about this Lomachenko Haney fight. You know, leave, leave your comments and, and thoughts about the fights coming up. Let's go ahead and get into the fight. My prediction was that Devin Haney was going to win by decision. And I said it was going to be a very, very tough fight. And I thought it would be a very, very close bout. And it was. At points. But I, I, I think that Lomachenko showed a lot in terms of the weight issue. I think that that was the main reason why I said Dan, Devin Haney would win. I said that Lomachenko is the better boxer. Better mind overall. Haney's really good too, but Lomachenko is the better boxer. But the weight, I believe, would continue to be an issue. Because it was an issue for him at 135 before, and it's been since he moved up. At 126 and 130, he's a monster. He's just running through everybody. At 135, he doesn't have the power to really get guys out of him. But he can still box circles around you like a wizard to make you look stupid. I just didn't think it would be just quite enough, but I thought he was right there. All right, so let's go ahead and and and, and break this fight down. All right, so you know you had the the big build up to the fight and all that, a lot of words exchanged from Haney's side, not really much from Lomachenko's side. So you get into this fight and and you get into the ring, bell rings, and round one, I I had it. Uh, it was a fill out round, some action near the end. You know, what I mean, it started to heat it up, heat up towards the end of that round. Loma was more active. He was stalking them. He was he didn't take any time to download. And they mentioned that in the live cast between Andre Ward and Timothy Bradley. They're talking about that. He said, ain't no downloading today. And he was moving forward and trying to establish that range. So he was more active, but I thought Haney had a few more effective shots. And I thought he took that field out round. It could be a swing round, but I give that to Devin Haney. Uh, round two, Loma applying pressure all round, controlled the pace. He landed more of the good shots. So Devin Haney, he started working that right hook, that right uppercut. We'll call that like a shovel hook to the body. So he started trying to find a home for that. So he landed a few body shots, but he didn't do a whole lot. Uh, I thought Loma just applied pressure, set the pace. Um, and then third round, this was the first dominant round of the fight for me. And I thought Loma came out, he was dominant after Haney had some success to the body early on in that round. He came out and dominated round three. And I had him landing approximately 19 punches to Devin Haney's 11 punches. And I thought he had the more effective out of those punches as well. Fourth round, uh, I thought Devin Haney, he really bounced back. He responded back because that was a moment where somebody had, somebody had to decide what the tone of the fight was going to be. And instead of letting Loma completely put his foot on the gas and pull away, Haney responded back immediately like, no, we're, we're right here. We are right here. We're going, I'm going to be here all night. So he had a very good round. I thought Loma did good work too. Um, but Haney, I thought he landed about 10 punches to Loma's four. And he got that check left hook in and it got Loma's attention. So round four was to Haney. So I had a 2-2 two -two tied up to this point. And then round five, this was a very, very interesting round because I, I, I thought that both guys looked pretty crisp. They, they they were throwing punches, but each one of them had an answer for the other guy's game plan. So I, I said high level action by both. Haney controlled the round early on, but then Loma heated up and he straight up outworked him. I would say in the last minute and a half of that round. And I thought Loma won uh, a high level chess match in that round so round five the loma round six i said uh great round by both of these guys uh devin haney set the tone early and loma responded he he hit him with some some shoe shine some quick hands and brrr, like you know he shined him up a, a bit in the middle of that round but then haney he closed this out strong with the body shots and he took that round because of that all right and he found a right a home for that right hook that i mentioned earlier to the body so round six went to Haney, about 14 punches to nine landed for Loma. Round seven, I thought Haney had a great round, and so did Loma. So they both had another really, really good, good round. And this is where the fight started to heat up, honestly. And uh, Haney, he landed a big shot in that round. He fainted the jab, and he landed a hook. And he didn't hurt Loma, but he, that was the best punch of the round. He set the tone for it. I uh, had him landing about 11 punches to Loma's nine. So it was, and both of them were effective. It's just, he was just, that shot stood out among a few others to me. Round eight, Loma, they, 
he was landing very, very good shots. Uh, handy counter. He was right there. However, man, Loma had a double left, double left, straight left in that round. And he had one point near like the one minute mark where he threw a stiff jab. And you just seen Devin Haney's head just snap back. And it was an eye opener <laughs> for everybody in the arena and all those that are watching the TV. It's like you, you rarely see a jab that lands that crisp with that amount of power and effectiveness. And it was, it sent a message because this was the beginning of things to come later in, in, in the fight. So that round I gave to Lomachenko, uh, 10 punches landed to seven for Haney. So I had it tied up through eight rounds. I could see it being possibly five for Lomachenko, but uh, you know, I, I thought it was, just, I mean, uh, five, three Lomachenko, but I, I, I had it a solid four, four. Going into round nine, this this is where it gets a little funky for me, cause round nine is a is a, one of the clearest swing rounds in my opinion, okay? Because I said good round by both, but Haney was he seemed to be more effective with the body shots. He was landing a lot of body shots in that round. He landed about fourteen punches to Lomas thirteen. However, at the end of the round, you could see it near the end. I think. Uh, Bradley or Ward pointed it out. He said, that's blood coming from the mouth. He was bleeding from his mouth, and he looked a little bit tired. Like he was, I wouldn't say he emptied a the clip there, but he definitely exerted more energy than he was planning on doing at that point. He looked worse for wear, even though it looked like he landed the better punches. That's why it's a swing round for me, because, okay, you it looked good, but when you went to sit down, Loma looked like, all right, I'm about to get him. Whereas Haney just looked like, he was, he was looking for answers. He was looking for answers. And I think that might have been, it was either that round, round nine or round 10, where he went to the corner and he was looking for answers from his father because he's like, yo, he, he can see what I'm doing. And he was trying to make adjustments. Okay. So round nine, that could be a swing round. All right. And I might, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you why in a, in a minute. Uh, round 10, this is where Loma started dominating. Laney, Haney looked confused, and Loma hurt him early on in the round. He hurt him earlier on in that round, and he had him confused. He was changing angles. He couldn't see where he was coming from. And that was the most dominant round in the fight, hands down, by either fighter. Even more so than round three, where Loma was dominant. This was just like he was beating the brakes off of Devin Haney in this round. That round went to Loma, and then... Round 11, he cont he upped the ante. He put his foot on the gas. And I saw Haney starting to fade a little bit, and Loma started landing big shots. And key phrase here, started imposing his will. He was imposing his will on that dude in round 11. And then round 12, swing round. Very, very close. And the commentators were mentioning, hey, somebody has to close out the show. Who's going to do it? even as we're getting to about a minute left in the 12th round. So it was a very, very close round. I thought that Haney settled down a little bit and, and edged out the round. At about the, the buck 10-minute mark, buck 5-minute mark on, he started edging it out to the end. Um, so I gave him that round, but again, that could be a swing round. So all things considered, the final tally that I had was 6-6 six to six draw. That's the best score I could give Devin Haney in that fight. If you want to say he didn't lose, fine. But I don't see any way you can say that Devin Haney won the fight. Okay? Um, additionally, I could also see it 7-5 to five with um, one of the swing rounds. The first round or the 12th round going to Lomachenko. And then I think 8-4 um, is a possibility as well. I, I'll probably lean more 7-5 to five Loma. That, that's what I feel right here. Um, but I, I think a draw, a draw would be acceptable, but I, I still lean 7-5. Uh, to five. That, That's my personal scorecard. So I thought it was complete and utter ridiculousness that they had two scorecards as eight rounds to four, 116-112 to 112 in Devin Haney's favor. Complete and utter bullshit. All right, the one score card where it was 114, 113, whatever, all right. I don't agree with it, but go ahead. But 116, 112, like, you guys already had your score cards made up before you even turned them in. That's How do you get that score? S seeing how close the fight was 
in the first half and then seeing the domination by Lomachenko, especially in rounds 9, 10, uh, I mean 10, 11, and possibly 9 in that fight. Like, how could you possibly get that fight to Devin Haney? All right? and he, But he, he fought valiantly. He fought very well. Let, let's not take that away from either guy. It, it was a high-level chess match. I think at points, Devin Haney looked bad, not because he's an average fighter, but because Lomachenko was that good. Against a lot of these other fighters, you wouldn't see those guys doing to Devin Haney some of the things that Lomachenko was able to do in those later rounds. When it got real and he started, he 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 downloaded the sequence and he had him figured out. Very few guys can do that. That's a gift. Um, as critical as I am uh, about him, another another guy who was able to do this, Floyd Mayweather. It's been one, two, three rounds. It, it, it take a couple snapshots, download the data, and then he'll turn it up on your ass, man. It's, that's a special skill. I, I think you're partially born with it, and then the other part of it is you uh, develop and fine-tune it over time to the point where it becomes scary how locked in you can be and how quickly you can deduce patterns and come up with a plan B, C, D, all the way through Z. All right? Some guys only have a plan A and B. These type of guys, even if they only have a, a, a plan A, B, C, D, E, and F, they'll figure out another plan within the fight as they're fighting you. Right? That's what... So it's, it would be foolish and unfair to try to take away from Devin Haney. All right? Um, so great fight. It, it was everything that it was hyped up to be, in my opinion. Uh, excellent fight. Uh, a guy that's coming in into his prime in Devin Haney and a guy that's still in his prime, though he may be getting older at this point. And he, age will come and, and collect his, his due in increments. Never never a lump sum unless you're doing like ungodly amounts of drugs and other things. Uh, typically, Father Time collects his payment in increments. A little bit of speed here. You'll notice it that year. A little speed there, then you start to notice it. Then a little bit of power, then maybe a knee. I mean, like, it, it chip away at you. You know what I mean? Like, you don't eat a whole cake at one time, unless you're an absolute animal. You, you eat a little piece here and there. You just chip away at it. So that's, that's typically what happens. But even if it's happening right now, he's still head and shoulders on par or better than the majority of guys that are sitting at 126, 130, and 135. So, I mean, that tells you everything you need to know. So that was my decision for Haney and Lomachenko. I thought Loma should have got the nod, and I it, I felt I felt bad for Loma and his team, and I felt bad for the fans because look, Devin Haney, hometown, fighting out at Las Vegas. When the decision was called, when Lomachenko went up to speak in a post-fight interview in the ring. He got a standing ovation. You would have thought he was from Vegas. You would have thought they were they were fighting in his hometown. And then when Devin Haney went up to speak, he got booed. I mean, look, I'm not saying the fans are correct or incorrect, but I mean, not when the fans are not only booing, but it's your hometown crowd is booing you, and not just booing you, but then inexorably cheering on your opponent as if he's he's Julius Caesar coming in after winning a big battle. And then you look at the fight and see what you saw. How, how can you not think Lomachenko won? I mean, let me know what you guys think. That, that's the way I see it. But um, great fight, and we got more fights coming up. I cannot wait for this Spence and Crawford fight. I've been calling for it for so long. I was ready to make a video last December before it got canceled. So, you know... Let's 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 get to July 29th and, and get a good fight in. Um, yo, thanks for tuning in, um, and I'll be at you guys on the next one. I'll be talking about hopefully a Celtics loss against the Heat, um, as well as the Lakers sweep that we saw. That that would make nothing nothing would make me happier as a Sixers fan than to see that. But with that said, I'll catch you on the next one. Deuces.